How you doing, Seb? Okay. Hi, Eric. Uh, how you doing? Uh, I'm fine here. I'm thank doing you very for well. Calling me. Uh, <laughs> thank you for doing this. I know we had to work out the schedule because, or the time zone, because yeah. it is very early yeah. in the morning. It is very early in the morning at my home, but it's very late at night at your home. <laughs> yeah. So, Seb, let's just mm-hmm. jump right in. What, how did you know? How did you get yes. into making shooting rests? Mm, okay. Well, Eric, uh, it's a long story actually, but I, I will make it short. Uh, so we have time. First, uh, it's uh, we have time. It's about my desire to shooting. Okay. On shooting, yeah. So at first, I came to Australia to learn a shoot pen dress. Rob Kernel offered me to learn uh, to use his, his rifle. And then uh, I saw many rests there, various rests. And I'm very impressed with one that uh, someone, uh, Peter Van Muir in Australia, that makes a coaxial rest that I'm very impressed. I was very impressed with, him, with his rest. And after that, after I back home, I, I try to... Uh, because I like uh, designing and tinkering with things. So I try to make my own and then start from there. And then uh, I ask a lot in Pinterest.com. Pinterest. And then from there, uh, yeah, it has uh, time flows and I, I make rest now. <laughs> yeah. That was a very short story. Um, how long sorry, did my you English sh- not very well. How long did you shoot F-Class? I mean, uh, Pinterest. Mm, uh, it was some uh, years ago. Uh, it was started about uh, 2002 or three, I think. And then until uh, about 2007 or something. I, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, I, I, I cannot remember exactly. And then I start to shoot F-Class. Oh, okay. Do you still shoot F-Class now? Yes, now I'm, I shoot M-Class. Uh, but on occasion, Eric, not... not uh, not in a daily basis or something. Uh, just uh, when I shoot for overseas. Okay, because you shot at the World Championship, correct? Twenty seventeen. <clears throat> yes, yes, in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing you there. So. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, I saw you too. So. so so you design a rest, and that was the original Seb rest, right? The the one that would pivot. Yes. Um, what led mm-hmm. to the to the neo? What you know? I mean, because you had a, it looked like you had a really good rest. What keeps you motivated oh. to keep improving? <clears throat> so. Uh... Probably because I, I want to improve uh, what I make. Uh, basically, it's something like that. So uh, when I see or uh, I broke them, I, I, I have to. So on the the old one, the original set press, I, I know it's uh, something like a triangle base with a pivotal base and then a uh, yeah, single post. But uh, then I think I had problem with uh, the, the elevation for up and down. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I adopt uh, the parallels, uh, what we uh, the rack and pinion, and then I, with fast uh, travel for up and down. Uh, also, and uh, the others also. So uh, the internal also. So I try to, to make it uh, better over time. Okay. So you, it appears that you look at your own design and then you find the flaws in it. Yes. <clears throat> then you improve on the, let's call them flaws, right? And so yes. you, are you a pretty, uh, you, you critique yourself often? Your designs, your own designs? Yes. Uh... I have never seen uh, a coaxial rest other than Peter Van Meers before uh, in Australia. So uh, I did not remember if I s- saw a bar list there. So uh, basically, I, uh, I tried to uh, tinkering with uh, the internal everything. Uh, so 
and I try to make it uh, myself in Indonesia. Uh-huh. At first, uh, I don't have uh, any machinery, so I just make some sketch and then ask uh, my friend to to make the parts, the components. So yeah. you were not a machinist. No, no, uh, I'm not a, a machinist or a, not a mechanical engineering by. Uh, I'm I'm on actually an architecture background. Wow! <clears throat> so <laughs> so you became a machinist because of the rest. Yes, exactly. Wow. So that's very impressive because now <laughs> you cannot, you cannot go to an F class match without seeing a set mm-hmm. rest. They're everywhere. Mm, yeah. I'm glad that people uh, like my, my rest. Uh, it's uh, uh, something like uh, in your life, uh, not, not a plan, not a plan uh, action, you know. Uh, it just uh, happened that way. <laughs> well, you know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean because yeah. I'm going through the same thing. I don't know yeah. if you know about my tuners and my tuner brakes. I I built a, I bought a CNC machine and, uh, you mm-hmm. know, before I knew it, it's, it's uh, I feel like I need another one. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's great, Eric. Yeah. So, so you have, how long, what, when did you release your first Sebrest? You mean the original one yeah. or yeah, the, original. the new or? No, the original one. The original one, if I remember, if my uh, memory served me right, I, I think about 2002 or something or three. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 sorry. 2005, I think. 2005? Yeah, about 2004 or 2005. So was it? And then I start to make a new. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, So the original Mm Sebrest, you released the original Sebrest. And of course, it looks like a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. It looks very pretty, very, very fancy, very bling bling, like we call it. (laughs) Thank you. How long? I try. How long was it an instant success or did it, did it go slow at first? What happened? So at first I only make a uh, 10 rest uh, at first uh, and that uh, all parts made uh, by uh, another source, my friends, mm-hmm. uh, a workshop. So I just installed it, uh, the part together and tune and then, and then send it to uh, some people that uh, need the rest. And then after that, uh, more demands. And then uh, I make something like 25 or 50 or, and then 100 and then even 500 per batch. Wow. Like what I do now. Wow. Yeah. So that's, so how long did it take before you decided to buy your own machine? Hmm. Uh, let me tell you like this. Uh, it begins because uh, I'm not quite satisfied. I did not quite satisfied with the result, with the component, the quality, uh, the tolerances, et, et, and so on. So I I acquired uh, some uh, milling machine, manual machi- uh, milling, uh, after about maybe about four or five years after, uh, uh, three or four years after I the, the old original, uh, original set price. Then after that, uh, uh, yeah, I, I learned by myself and uh, buy from my machinist. So, mm-hmm. uh, so then I make uh, every part, every important part by myself and then uh, give it to my man and then uh, start to make the, the component. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, it was. So I learned uh, to do the machinery. Sure. So it was because you wanted better quality that you had to start doing it yourself. Yes. Yes, exactly. Do you find it impressive? It I'm sorry, but do you find it 
this is what I find impressive is that someone like you that was mm. a not a machinist has to mm. get your own machine and can produce better parts than someone who is a machinist. And I think the key component is that you cared more than the machinist about the parts that you were producing. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I think, I think I'm blessed that uh, I'm uh, as many, many friends call me Cluey Bloke or something. So uh, I just try to make uh, what I think uh, good or better uh, from the others and not by resembling or copying others. Uh, that's uh, my, my uh, what I, what I think. So uh, I make, if I make something, it must be uh, of my own design, not uh, by resembling or copying others. I don't like it. What, what about, what about maybe not copying, but reusing mm -hmm. something, a, di a different uh, manufacturer? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, correct. So and maybe you incorporate some components, but not the overall design. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, correct. Uh, so, so you buy your own machine, you buy one machine. How long before mm. you bought the second one? It's quite fast, I think. Uh, if I remember correctly, about one or two years. And then uh, I try to uh, buy some more manual machine, uh, manual milling and lead. And then a, a, a few years later, I I, I tried to uh, to buy uh, um, the CNC, mm -hmm. three axis, not not five, four or five <laughs> axis, just uh, a, a simple three axis. It helps uh, the uh, to produce uh, more rest with right. uh, yeah with uh, with uh, controllable quality. Yeah. So so you bought two manual machines and then you bought your first cnc yes and then at that point the next machine came faster correct yes correct eric yeah how many machines do you, you have said, now uh, so uh five manual millings three uh manual lead and then one uh, CNC lead, and then three CNC milling. Wow. Yeah. So I assume you do rest mm -hmm. full time now, right? No more architecture? Yes. Yes, correct, Eric. Yes. So did you have to learn how to run all your machines or did you have to, uh, did you hire machinists? I hire machinists. So uh, I can do manually, but I, I know nothing about a CNC. So I just uh, make a requirement sketches, uh, make prototypes, and then uh, my uh, machinists uh, do it for me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when did the when did the Neo come out? Neo, I think about two thousand nine or two thousand ten. So the old separation is from two thousand four, two thousand five to two thousand nine, I think. Yeah. Okay. If, if I remember correctly. So now the Neo has been around for over a decade, more than ten years. Yes. Yes. Are you working on the replacement? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, say it again, please. Uh, sorry. Are you are you working on the on the replacement for the Neo, the the new version? Uh, yes, <laughs> in the work. I hope uh, soon, but uh, for the time being, uh, because of the demand, I have to finish some more Neos and Mini uh, Enjoy Pot also. So after I finish uh, this batch. I would start to make the Neo X, the new Neo X. Oh, it's gonna call the yeah. Neo. It's gonna be called the Neo X. Um, I think so. Yeah, 
it could probably be a, a different uh, total it would look totally different than neo but i i would call it neo x neo x all right you guys heard it here <laughs> uh, so what about the mini why why does the mini exist okay uh it's hard to explain but uh at first uh many people uh, ask a more affordable and light brush mm -hmm. instead of the new so i try to make one so so mini is a basically designed for uh for more affordable uh compact and light so uh so that is uh i made the mini after you made your mini brian blake made some adjustments to the feet uh, mm -hmm. and now your your new what do you call the newest mini x is it the x yes mini x? yes um yes you incorporated a lot of those changes plus what i really like is you went to the neo style bag which i think is really smart oh, okay mm -hmm. Why did you have to make the Mini X? Were you not satisfied with the Mini? Yes. Yes, uh, the top uh, makes the different. What about the, uh, the Joypod? I mean... Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, at first, uh, my dealer in UK, Fox Fry Arms, asked me to make a bipod. Uh, but I still remember that uh, I said to Brian that uh, I don't want to make a bipod uh, because uh, I'm already very busy with uh, the new uh, rest at that time. Uh -huh. But uh, time goes, and then uh, after, after, what to say? Uh, basically, I, I like a, a joystick uh -huh. control uh, rest. So I try to make a, a joystick control bipod then. Because uh, I see I see no uh, joystick uh, bipod at that time. Uh -huh. So I try. Many people, uh, many people are about to say, uh, not believe that I can make a, a coaxial or a joystick bipod before. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not, maybe only good for two, two LR or rimfire or two, two, three, and not uh, suitable for 308 or larger. Yeah, something like that. So, but I tried and I think I, I made it. Oh, you did. <laughs> so I think, <make> <laughs> So you can see that uh, Joypod is light enough, uh, only about half kilo or uh, 20 ounce or something. And then uh, it can handle a uh, large uh, caliber also. And it works for F-Class also. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a big success for you, the, the bipod? Mm, yes. So far, yes. Because that's a market that and you were uh, not into, correct? That, that's a market that, I mean, you had the, the F open guys with, with your rest, but that, there was nobody in the, in the FTR side that was using your products because you didn't make a bipod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I make uh, the bipod because it it was an excess before. So uh, there's no, uh, there was no... Uh, joystick uh, bipod before so I I try to make one on the uh, so how do you handle your uh, your production runs do you do neos and then you do maxes and then you do minis and then you do bipods or you do everything together uh Basically, I make a uh, one model per one batch, so something like a uh, two hundred fifty or five hundred uh, 
Mini at the time, and then uh, and the Neo, and the Joy Pod. So, uh, so my dealers give me uh, a customer list usually. So from there, I gather and then uh, make priority. So now I can make a uh, two or three model at a time. Um. How many dealers do you have in the U.S.? Only two. Uh, Ernie Bishop in Wyoming, mm -hmm. and then uh, Mike Redigan in Oklahoma. Uh, Ernie handles all my of all of my products, and uh, Mike Redigan is for the Neo Pentress, Neo Redigan version for Pentress with counterweight. Okay. Okay. Um. So you make 250 to 500 rests. How long does it take you to do 500? Mm, it was about half year before, but uh, we, we improved. Now about three to five months. Okay. So you make about 100, 100 a month. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it appears that are you planning to expand the shop, or th this is this is as big as you want to keep it? No, I I would like to control the quality. You cannot make a uh, too much a uh, product with a uh, uh, a lot of uh, with a uh, with a uh, too big quantity. I do not believe in a. Uh, in that, so uh, I, I I try to keep uh, my production rate as as is now, because I, I'm already very uh, busy uh, right now. So I can uh, ask my machinist to make the parts now, but I uh, to chop the pitch by myself. So uh, we lost really the microphone. Complex. I can't hear you. Your microphone. Something happened to your microphone. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, per better. Try that. Hello. Yeah, per perfect. Okay. Yeah. So you were saying that you can ask your machine, as you don't want to expand anymore. Uh, I think no. Yeah. It's uh, you know uh, this one already made me uh, very busy, Eric. Yeah. Do you have managers? No, I, I do it uh, by myself. Uh, Lily, my wife, I help me. <laughs> have you considered? <laughs> have you considered hiring a manager that can help you with quality control, and then you can expand? Maybe, maybe if you, Eric, help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No. Yeah. No, I, um, I can uh, pay you. <laughs> well, I, I understand, you know, you, you want to be as busy as you want to be, and then you just want to maintain quality, and that's your goal. So, you know, if you're there, just if you're happy. Yeah. Do you ever worry that somebody else is going to come out with the next be best thing, and all of a sudden, set products is going to be gone? Mm. I don't know. So uh, I only believe that uh, if you make good product, you always have uh, your own market, your own customer, loyal customer. That's what I believe. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you? So now you have this. You know the, the you you are no longer making the original rest, right? That one is no longer uh, made. The old chef rest, yeah, yeah, no, no longer. No more. Uh, since 2009 or 2010. Yeah. So it was replaced by the Neo. Yes, yes, exactly. When the Neo X comes out, will the Neo be gone or is it, are you going to have those options? Uh, I would think so, but it depends. So, uh, but uh, I myself uh, would believe that uh, the Neo X will replace the Neo. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, what about the Max? Do you sell a lot of Maxes? I uh, know Max. Uh, Max on uh, only uh, for rifle with a stock up to eight inches. I make Max because uh, there's a demand in Australia at first. In Australia, you should F class, which uh, you have a rifle with a very wide stock, extra oh, wide okay. stock, and up to eight inches or something. Yeah. So that was why I make it the max. Okay. Uh, now, uh, maybe I would guess that uh, the 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 fly shoot in Australia not uh, not growing fast. So maybe the demand is uh, not like at the first. I see. You can understand what I mean. So yeah. So the demand is not uh, is not uh, not not stable as like uh, many years ago. Okay. Are you planning to get rid of the manual machines and replace everything with CNC at some point? No. At some point, uh, we still have to do it manually. The prototype, everything. Yeah. So you prefer... So it's a, it's a mix. So you prefer manuals for some operations? Yes. Still. It's what? Uh, still. Still do uh, manually uh, for some, some parts, yeah. several parts. Hmm. I find that interesting. Uh, mm. uh, I'm trying to understand why you would prefer manual over CNC. Uh... One reason is uh, I have my old man that do the, so I, I keep them. I lost your microphone again. Oh, sorry. There, it's working. There, I don't, there, it's working again. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. So, so tell me why you prefer manual over CNC. Okay. So uh, one of the reasons is uh, because uh, in our production process now, mm -hmm. uh, some still do uh, with, uh, I still need uh, the manual machine. And also uh, I would like to keep my old man uh, that worked for me for many years uh, that do the manual okay. machine. Yeah. Could, could you teach them how to run a CNC? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I know I cannot, what you uh, run the, I cannot run the CNC machine myself, Eric. Honestly. You push a button. <laughs> yeah. You do great, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's interesting. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Very interesting. So what, what, why are you rest so good looking i mean was that always the the purpose have are you a guy that that prefers everything really nice and shiny and neat mm. i would say that uh, my race is not very pretty eric uh so when i make uh the components at first i do it manually so I cannot make it uh, as as as, uh, as wild as possible. No, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, how to make it uh, uh, effective to make uh, by manual or by CNC. Then, uh, so it's a different if you start it from CNC. From my point of view, I, uh, from my view now, if uh, I make from CNC, uh, if I uh, I think uh, to make the part by CNC. It will be uh, more, uh, you know, uh, I can free the shape, uh, everything. So because uh, at first uh, I make it manually, so I have, uh, what to say, uh, restriction, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would think that my rash is not pret uh, very pretty, at least for, for now. <laughs> Sounds like the Mini X is going to be very pretty. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you, Eric. Uh, uh, yeah, just like uh, the mini, uh, you you know the the base head uh, where you uh, fold the the leg. It was also made by by manual uh, by myself at first, but then uh, use uh, the CNC and then uh, it's more uh, it's more quick to make. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the new X will be uh, more pretty, I think. Who's getting the first one? <laughs> uh, so you you see. Uh, I usually make uh, some prototype after I uh, I improve or I am quite satisfied with the, the result. Then I'm, I I usually send some prototype to some shooter or some friend that I uh, I think uh, can give me uh, feedback, mm -hmm. honest feedback, feedback. So it will be you. Also, wow. Eric. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you. I can't wait. <laughs> You're uh, yeah, thank you, so Eric. I have your Neo and now I have one of your mini X's. It's still in a box. I just been very busy. But now that the winter's coming, I'm going to do videos on my because, you know, I've been having great success oh. with your Neo and I'm going to compare the two rests. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to shoot off the Neo and then I'm going to set up the mini X to give me comparable or better results. But because it is lighter, it is more compact. Uh, I think I like the form factor of the Mini X just because it's easy to travel with, like you like you said. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I know I have a lot of friends that have switched to the Mini because they fly to matches. And, you know, the Mini is very mm -hmm. compact. Yeah. It will be great. it will be great, Eric. Uh, I will be thankful to you uh, because uh, when you do a, a comparison of side by side with the same rifle or same shooter, everything it will be more uh, more more correct. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I I see myself. I mm. I don't like change as much. I I want to find something that works. And then I'm done. I mm -hmm. stick with it. Uh, oh, okay. But for me to do a change, I have to do a lot of testing to prove to myself mm -hmm. that it is either better or just as good because I, I just yes. cannot take the chance to go to a match and, and have a failure. Right. Understood. Yes. Agreed. Eric. So let me tell you my, my Seb story, how I first, Ended up with a set rest. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, I don't know, 2010, maybe 2009. And I had just a regular, I had a shade tree top on a bench rest, uh, Caldwell bench rest bottom with mm -hmm. big feet. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was great because I had pieced it together. And I had been shooting, uh, I was shooting, Okay, my scores just were not getting much better. They were, I was working really hard. And one day, a friend of mine, he shot, we, we were shooting the Texas State Long Range Championship. And on the second day, he had to leave. And he said, you want to, you know, on the, on, the, on the first day, I was struggling. I was having a hard time. I was not shooting very well at all. And on the second day, he said, hey, I can't be here. Do you want to use my set rest? And I thought, well, mm -hmm. I don't see how it's going to help me. But you know what? I'm already out of the competition. I'll use it. So I used the set rest for the first time. I won the, the day. I shot better than everybody else. I shot my highest score I had ever shot. I couldn't believe how much better the set rest was. The next day, I bought a Seb. And I've been a Seb fan ever since. Never looked back. Thank you very much, Eric. I, 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 what to say? It is, it's your own experience. Uh, so uh, you must say the truth about that. Uh, for me, myself, uh, because I'm not, uh, I don't have uh, so much experience in shooting. So I only shoot uh, when I come to overseas, uh, where I attend a match in 
in the US or Australia. So in Indonesia, I don't shoot myself. So I cannot explain or I cannot uh, say uh, a lot about my re- my own race because I I don't use it uh, often. Okay. Well, I can tell you. Um, and then, of course, you had the original wrist, and then the neo come out, and of course, we had the height adjustment that was much better. Mm-hmm. But I I was very hesitant to go to the neo because it didn't pivot. And that one of the things that I really liked about the original is you set it down, you loosen the adjustment, you set your gun, and you pivot it to mm-hmm. the target, then you tighten everything down. But then I found out that it wasn't that hard you set your rest down you line it up with a target you put your gun on it but the stability with the neo was impressive the height adjustment everything about it i really liked and it took me i still kept my original i got the neo and it took me a few months before i decided that the neo was a better rest i sold the other the other rest and i i've had a neo ever since i mean i've had a neo for since they came out about 10 years now and it's a great rest. I mean, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Eric. Yeah. I really ever, appreciate uh, your... You're welcome. Do you ever have people talk about how your rest are expensive? What about the price point? How do you decide on the price point? <laughs> yeah, uh, not not many. Uh, not many people uh, tell me that uh, my rice is expensive. Only a few. Yeah, uh, but that, that's uh, I think that's everyone. Uh, no, I, everywhere. Sorry. So it can be uh, happen everywhere. So uh, you know uh, something like a, a starter shooter uh, might. My thing, my probably thing that a rest is not uh, important. Uh, if you know what I mean, so uh, that's from what I see uh, from uh, by reading uh, from the internet. Yeah, some yeah. some uh, what I think uh, that rest or rear back is not important, something like that. So they only use uh, uh, a conventional rest. Oh yeah. It works, but uh, what to say? Uh, if you shoot a more competitive uh, lay, I would think that you need uh, every point or every percent uh, to make uh, you the best, uh, something like that. If you know what you know what I understand, oh, what I mean. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a so, level. Uh, in my opinion, yeah, yeah, yeah. In my so, opinion, front rest uh, helps. Oh, it absolutely helps. It absolutely helps. Uh, and I agree with you. It's typically the newer shooters that they, they, they just don't believe that a rest would make that big of a difference. But it happened to me. I mean, I went from bottom of the pack to the literally I beat everybody on day two. And all I did was change the rest. Yeah. And and it was impressive, yeah. the, the, the benefits. Uh, but yes, yeah. a front rest and a rear bag make all the difference in the world and that's why i don't even want to change my rear bag i have had for eight years and i went through a lot of bags before i found Mm -hmm. a good one uh i'm bringing on a new shooter um that's going to travel with me and i'm going to Mm -hmm. teach him everything about f-class and we're going to have to start for his stock whatever he decides on we're going to start, we're going to have to get a rest. We're going to have to get a rear bag and we're going to try everything there is to try because it's, it's amazing the difference that a rear bag and a front rest can make. And most people don't realize that they just don't think they can shoot good enough to tell, but oftentimes they cannot shoot good enough because of the rest that they have. And they, they just don't know that it's, it's, it's uh, a, yeah. It's a tough place to be because you don't shoot well and then you always go, well, whenever I can shoot better, then I'll change my rest. But all you have to do is change the rest and then you automatically will shoot better. It happened to me. Yeah. Um, 
and that comes from the master like you, Eric, not from me. I, as the maker, I can be biased uh, to say like that here, yeah, but it's it's come from you. Correct. Yeah. No. It's it's. Uh, trust me. I I I couldn't believe it myself. So like I said, I bought a set rest, and all of a sudden I start winning championships. It, it was it was amazing. That's why. You know, I wanted to have a conversation with you because this is something I have never told you before. This is the very first time you are hearing this from me and how your okay, rest. Thank you. Thank you. It converted my shooting career. It completely mm-hmm. improved everything. There was I, I kept working on on everything else. And I just want to I was one of those people that thought the rest can't make a difference. And it absolutely made a difference. Um. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. There is uh, it makes me happy also. Yeah. Um. Now, on the price point, we discussed the price point. How do you decide what price point mm-hmm. you're gonna release your your rests? So, uh, at first, my original set rest only cost about. 375 or 500 US dollar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, with times uh, I make uh, the new uh, more components. Uh, also, uh, yeah, yeah, more more time to make, more machining time to make, and then uh, it it uh, it's growing up, and then also that uh, the material cost also growing up every year almost every year so i have to raise the cost now uh, uh my rest uh, for the neo cost it's different uh, i have a dealer price Eric. so mm-hmm. my dealer price for the neo uh, uh maybe 800 or something i i forgot i i i i don't remember exactly uh maybe 900 or something yeah but uh with the office overseas shipping and the uh, uh, dealer profit everything so uh the rest becomes about uh, 1200 or 300 i'm not so sure about right that. so but what i'm saying is how do you decide it's just you you just look at your mm-hmm. material cost and then you just um or do you look at other products that are in the market and try to price your, your mm-hmm. product accordingly. So basically I, I, I uh, determine the price by myself. Okay. Uh, here's, here's a, a funny fact or, or interesting fact mm-hmm. about your mm-hmm. rest, you know, for anybody that says they are expensive. I bought my first Seb rest. Like I said, this is, mm-hmm. must've been 2010 or something. I don't remember. 2008 mm-hmm. i don't remember when it was but i bought my first set mm-hmm. and i thought it was a lot of money but I, after seeing the results mm-hmm. i thought I, I have to have one so i bought one i called ernie mm-hmm. and i said i need a set now and he you know he got me a set <laughs> um so i bought the original i don't remember how much i paid i think i paid mm-hmm. about 700 dollars for it and I shot with that rest for about five years. And I sold it mm. for 800. See, that's that. Mm. So that rest to me was free. Okay. Because I bought it for 700. Five years later, I sold it for 800. Okay. Then I bought a Neo, okay. right? So I yeah. bought the Neo and I think I paid $1,200 for the Neo. And then when my daughter started shooting, I immediately ordered a second Neo, right? Because that's a proven, that's a proven formula for me. And then I I, I sold, I, I ordered a Neo for about, I think, 1200 And then when my daughter quit shooting, I sold the Neo about three years later. And I sold it for $1,250. See, so it's, it's almost free free to use your products, at least to me, because I have never lost money on a Seb Neo. It's, I buy it. I use it for five years. I sell it. I make money. I get the newest version. And uh, it's, uh, 
your your products hold very good value because of how good they are. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I believe that uh, what to say. Uh, that's uh, something like added value, or I don't know what you call it. Yeah, it's added value. So, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, any new shooters out there that are look that are watching this video right now, I'm going to tell you, go buy a Seb. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the <laughs> price. You, uh, seriously, I mean, I, this is something that that I have done myself. Mm -hmm. Go buy a Seb rest. Mm -hmm. And don't look, don't leave. I know, I know the price, but guess what? You're not going to lose money on it. It's same thing with the custom action. You, you'll never lose money on a custom action yeah. because you buy it now, you use it for five years, you sell it, you sell it for the same money that you paid for it. So technically it was free. Mm -hmm. You get a good action, mm. a good, a good scope. Those items are pretty much free or very cheap because you get to resell them later on. Uh, barrels, use a good you barrel. Yeah, use a good barrel. And uh, the most expensive thing you will ever, ever use is bullets. So don't shoot them out of, out of an mm -hmm. inferior uh, system mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're just wasting money at that point. So get you a, a good rest, mm -hmm. good scope, good barrel, good stock, custom action, and then... You know, whenever you get ready to sell all that one day, guess what? You're going to, you're going to, you know, you're not going to lose that much money. All, in reality, those mm -hmm. items are not as expensive as face value, as, as you know, as it seems. Mm -hmm. So, Seb, what's next? <laughs> uh, pardon me, Eric. Uh, what next? Uh, you mean uh, what next project or... Yeah, are you working on something totally different, or or are you are you gonna go into a different market like you did with FTR? Are you doing something different? So uh, I only have two plans for the next year. One is the Neo X. Uh, it would look uh, totally different, I think. But I would keep uh, what is uh, already in, uh, proven in competition. So like the top, uh, the internal, I would keep it uh, as is because it's already uh, proven mm -hmm. uh, in competition. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to make uh, something like uh, people like uh, say uh, use a, a linear bearing or something. Um, probably I don't use it. Uh, I wouldn't use it. So I would keep... Uh, my rest as simple as possible, but versatile. And then uh, uh, what what what's already proven in competition. So uh, so next year is uh, Neo X, and then uh, I think I would make a, a ELR bipod because uh, oh. many people ask me to to make it. Yeah. I hadn't considered the ELR. That's that's uh, that's a big that's a big uh, sport. It's growing fast. Yeah, growing. Yeah. So I'm going to tell my, my Canada story. Um, I was in Canada and I had traveled 2000 miles to get there. And, uh, when I got mm -hmm. there, my set rest, I needed to adjust it. I, you know, I always check my adjustment and, uh, mm -hmm. that day I was checking my rest and, uh, you know, I was tinkering with it and then it hit me. Mm -hmm. I'll just go get Seb. So I went down the line. I found that you were just kind of hanging out. So I asked you to come look at my rest. And then you came and looked at it. You adjusted it all perfect. And everything was great. So how awesome was it? It was amazing to me to be at a world championship with a Seb rest and to just be able to walk down the line and go get Seb himself to come and make sure that my rest was good to go. Everything was perfect. You know, because I'm about to shoot the biggest competition of my life, which is the world championship. And to be able to mm -hmm. literally for me to be able to just go and walk up to Seb and he come over there and make sure my rest was set perfect. That was that was priceless to me, Seb. And it meant a lot to me. I don't know that I it's my I, I, I don't I don't I don't know that I expressed my gratitude, but it was I was very thankful that you took the time to 
checked my rest. Everything was great. And uh, I ended up shooting really well at the world championship. And uh, I was just, That's pretty good. I just had a hundred percent confidence in my gear. And like I said, for you to take the time to come and, and make sure my rest was set up properly. That meant a lot to me. So thank you. I only do uh, what I, I think have to do, Eric. Uh, that's all. I, I just try. So uh, I think that uh, it's my duty to make uh, anyone's rest, uh, anyone's uh, self rest. I mean, sorry, because I only uh, I only uh, do the self rest, and I only know my uh, my my own rest. Uh, never touch or never uh, inspect other rest of myself uh, in my whole life. So uh, I only do what I have to do. I think that's all. Yeah, but I mean, it meant a lot to me. Uh, honestly, it did. And uh, and that's another thing about you. I mean, you are, you make rests, but you're also a shooter. You know, you go to big, you know, I've seen you at Burger Southwest Nationals. I've seen you at the World Championship. I mean, you, you are a shooter. Uh, like I said, uh, for me, just to walk down the line and, and go ask you to check my rest and for you to come and make sure everything was, you know, mine and my daughter's. Um, it was great, and I, I just can't get that from anybody else. There's nobody else in the business that I would have the opportunity to do that with, you know? Okay. As I said, I only, have, uh, I only do what I have to do, Eric. Yeah. Um, actually, I try to, uh, to serve, yeah. Well, thank you. Actually, there's a new rest... Uh, Rod, Rod, uh, I don't know what his last name is, but uh, it's a it's a different rest. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. Have you seen the Rodzilla or something? Oh yeah, yeah, I I know. Uh, I've seen it. Yeah, uh, T-Rex or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, okay. So he's a shooter. So yeah. he's a shooter, and uh, it's mm -hmm. it's a different it's a different rest altogether. And. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, uh, I, I, you know, the first time I saw it, I, I automatically thought, well, that's illegal because it has a very small sandbag on the bottom and the rules require a sandbag on the bottom. But it appears mm -hmm. that uh, it appears that uh, it's legal. I mean, nobody has been disqualified. Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. um, do you look at, for example, like the T-Rex and go, because, I mean, that rest, to me, is pushing the, the limits of the rules. Do you ever intend to, to, to do that, or are you satisfied with, with the winning results that your, your rests are, are delivering? So, as I said before, that I would like to keep uh, my rest as simple as possible and uh, as versatile also. And, and I would like to keep what is uh, already proven in the competition. So... I do know myself that uh, my rest is better or or, or just a so -so rest myself uh, without uh, because I never use uh, other rest myself. So I can say uh, a lot about uh, other rest. So I only say and, and work for my own rest. That's mm -hmm. all. So uh, uh, concerning the, the back, front back, I would keep uh, my back uh, uh, just like now, maybe a bit, a little improvement. Okay. Okay. Well, Seb, thank you so much for this interview. Um, yeah. I You're know, welcome, Eric. Yeah. I know we had, like I said, we had to work on the, on the, on the timing. What time is it in Indonesia right now? What time is it? Nine o'clock, Eric. <laughs> 9 Local time. Yeah. 9 p.m. Uh, yes, we started the, yeah. we started this interview at 7 a.m. my time, so it's uh, it looks like we're 13 mm -hmm. hours difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 13 hours. Yeah. Are right. you ahead or behind? Uh, ahead. Ahead. So to to. Yes. So, okay. Uh, and 13 hours ahead uh, of you. So when you travel to the U.S. You save time, right? Because you're you're going back in time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not very good at time travel. I'm sorry. Um, 
Anyway, Seb, okay. thank you very much. And I, I look forward to, to your mini X or what was it? The Seb X, right? No, the Neo X. Yes. Yes. Eric. Yeah. Well, thank you, Seb. And, uh, Take care. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Tonight I'm feeling me. Gonna make you nervous. Tonight I'm feeling me.